supercell. Please make these balance changes happen. Hmm. Let me take a look at that. Well, what do you think? Hmm. I have to know. Please tell me what you think. You... You want to know what I think? Kairos, I think you're a freaking genius, man! These balance changes look great! Hello fellow brawlers, I'm Kairos Time, and it is time to brawl today! We're gonna be talking about the balance of Brawl Stars, and I'm specifically going to be covering the balance changes I am begging Supercell to implement, okay? Now, an update has to be coming around the corner with a global release of Brawl Stars, and I'm like 95% certain that we will see some type of balance changes. Now, today we're gonna start off by talking about the Brawlers that I think need a nerf, and then we're gonna move on to Brawlers that I think need a buff, and of course then, we will also talk about the Brawlers that are frequently mentioned needing a balance change in some way, one or another that I don't think need balancing. Then of course for all of this I'm going to be talking about how I would or would not balance each of the brawlers as well as my reasoning behind it. Make sure you uh, watch through the end especially if you think there's a brawler that you think needs a balance change and you never know guys I just might change your mind. Or you'll just be more convinced that certain brawlers need to be nerfed. Looking at you, Spike. Then, of course, guys, make sure you don't forget to subscribe so that I can tell you exactly what the balance changes will be that we will receive in the next update as soon as I possibly can tell you those. Okay, guys, let's go ahead and start off by talking about Spike, who is so incredibly dominating, and he's been so incredibly dominating for a long time. He was S tier in every game mode other than Heist, and even then there is a reason to play him in certain maps. Now, his regular attack has a range of 7 and 2 thirds tiles, but then his burst radius is five tiles. This means that his regular attack is effectively the longest in the game. That's right guys, he even outranges Piper and Brock. Now the directions of those spikes are completely random, which means that there is no way to predict whether his shot will actually hit a guy or whether or not you will be able to dodge that spike shot. If you're about within three tiles of a spike blast, you will get hit. But if you are between three and five tiles from the spike blast, you may get hit. Now my suggestion to actually nerf spike is to decrease the range of the spikes after they burst by about two tiles. Now this would do two things, okay? First of all, it would actually decrease Spike's effective range, which would actually still be equally long with Brock's range of 10 and 1 third tiles. Additionally, this would actually decrease the negative impact of the randomness, because if you're within that three tile radius, you'll still most likely get hit, but you won't run into those annoying situations where it's kind of like a toss-up of whether you're going to get hit by one or two spikes when you're an entire 12 tiles away from Spike. Now, I wanted to really clarify something, okay? When it comes to Brawl Stars and the competitiveness of Brawl Stars, I want to make sure that I emphasize that I do think that randomness is good for a competitive game like Brawl Stars. Randomness is good when it emphasizes a player's skill in the game, okay? Now, I think the perfect example of this is the randomness in Energy Drink. Spike's shot, as far as randomness is concerned, mostly doesn't do anything to emphasize player skill, and therefore, in my opinion, is considered useless and annoying in the game. And what I mean is that when you when you shoot out an attack with Spike shot, that randomness will either cause you to hit the enemy player, or it will cause you to not hit, hit the enemy player. And if you hit them because of that randomness, you don't feel better about yourself as a player because you're awesome. It's just like, oh yeah, I kind of got lucky that time. But when you miss them, it's actually frustrating to you as a player. Now the part of Spike's randomness that does actually get emphasized by player skill is a player's knowledge of how far they have to be in order to either land a shot or to avoid being hit by a Spike's blast. And that means that by reducing the range of the Spikes after the blast, the randomness that doesn't emphasize skill is reduced and the skill-based randomness of his attacks actually remains intact. As Spike is right now, I really like how burst damagey he feels, especially close up or when you're able to land those hits and things like that, which is why I do not think that he needs a different kind of a nerf. This is how I would start off with rather than just like a damage decrease or a decrease in the number of spikes that, that Spike can actually land on a brawler. Up next, let's go ahead and talk about Penny, who is just straight up better than Jesse in almost every single way, okay? Her turret hides from walls and has an insane range. Her regular attack deals more damage and actually shoots faster than Jesse's attack. 
Her super actually charges in one less hit than Jessie's, and once her turret is up, it is an incredible controlling force over the map. Now, the first suggestion that I would say is to increase the amount of shots that it takes to charge from five shots up to six or seven shots. Now, Jessie is currently at six, and Penny is currently at five. I think that Penny's turret is, turret is more valuable than Jessie's, which is why I think that seven would be a good number for her turret to actually require to be charged up. Now, the second thing that I would do is actually decrease the randomness of the shot currently when Penny when Penny's turret actually fires at an enemy brawler it will fire its cannonball anywhere within one tile of where that enemy brawler is this means that if you are in one spot and then you move to a different spot when that turret actually releases a shot there's still a chance that it can hit you if it randomly selects that one tile in the direction that you decided to move from when you were when it originally fired. Now I mentioned randomness with spikes attack and why randomness can be a good thing if implemented into the game to emphasize player skill. In this situation, there is no way to determine where the randomly fired bomb will land. And that means that that random one tile radius where the bombs may land just becomes frustrating to players. When I am playing Penny and an enemy player does get hit by that Penny turret it. Never once was I like, oh yeah, I'm so awesome for getting that kill. Because it was just randomness. It was just kind of like, oh cool, my, my turret cut somebody out. And it's actually really hilarious. I laugh every time. I'm like, he just got killed by my turret and I didn't have to do anything. That was great. But it doesn't make me feel like a better player. Additionally, when I get taken out by a penny turret, especially when I am moving in a, a direction away from where I think it will land, that's incredibly frustrating to me because I'm like, what the heck? I tried to move in a way that I could predict that would actually result in me not getting hit and I still got hit. This is That's just so frustrating. And that's why I say that this randomness in the game is actually bad for Penny's turret. Another fun option to this would actually be to make it so that a red X or like a shadow or something like that would actually appear on the ground when the turret was firing up until the point where it actually landed so that the randomness could actually remain intact but then players could actually respond to that location and try to avoid it to the best of their ability. In this situation the player playing Penny could actually use that red X right there to determine oh they're going to avoid that spot now I know they're going to be moving in the opposite direction I now know where I can use my regular attack to shoot. Either way, that increases skill-based gameplay for both the player playing against Penny or the player playing as Penny. Okay guys, now let's go ahead and talk about a couple of brawlers that I definitely think need a buff. Uh, first of all, we're gonna start off with Colt, and Colt is one of the hardest brawlers to push right now. Now this is not necessarily a bad thing. I am all about there being high skill brawlers in a game as long as the high skill is matched with high reward. In fact, I actually want more high skill brawlers to be added to the game eventually. The issue with Colt right now is that his high skill does not provide a worthy reward for that skill, especially because there's almost always a reason to pick either Ricochet or Brock, depending on what you are wanting for the current match or map. Both Ricochet and Brock have a longer range than Colt, but Ricochet actually offers more control, while Brock offers more burst damage, potential especially at a longer range. Now, specifically how to buff Colt, I've actually thought a lot about this, and when I consider balancing a brawler, I try to think of a few different things. The first thing that I think of is making a brawler really fun to play. Additionally, I really like to try and think of a way that I can balance a brawler in a way that that brawler will still be good, but the other brawlers that are similar to it will also still be good. And when I think of the perfect Colt, I think of a quick firing, consistent, deep PS brawler who can weave in and out of danger with guns ablazing. Now right now, Colt will actually deal more damage than Ricochet with a straight shot. Ricochet's shot actually deals more damage if he bounces it with his star power, but Ricochet also outranges Colt, which I'm actually fine with because I want him to have more control than Colt does. Now in order to make a perfect Colt, I think the time it takes for his shot to reload should be decreased from 1.6 seconds down to 1.2 seconds. This is actually the same reload speed as Ricochet, but if you include animation times, this is actually 0.2 seconds faster than Ricochet for every single shot that Colt fires. This would actually maintain Colt's high skill status due to the difficulty it takes to land his shots, and he would still not be as good at controlling area damage as Ricochet is, and he also wouldn't have that long range burst damage of Colt or of Brock, but he could fire more consistently, which would make his misses feel less punishing, and he would also become the more consistent damage dealing superstar 
star that he always really should have been. As a side note, I would also increase his super range by one tile. This would still be one and one third tiles shorter than a straight shot ricochet super, super, and would make him slightly more viable in heist. Up next, guys, let's go ahead and talk about Crow, who used to be one of my favorite brawlers to play before his super reload speed was nerfed. Now, my perfect version of Crow would be a bird who's jumping in and out of battle all the time, even if it meant that he had lower burst potential. Currently, Crow's burst potential is insanely large. Now, to balance this, this is actually balanced with how infrequently Crow is able to charge up his super, which, like I mentioned earlier, makes Crow more boring to play. Now, my recommendation for Crow requires two parts. First off, he should be able to charge up his super much faster. He currently requires eight daggers each all with four ticks of poison or 32 ticks of poison total. Or to put this into perspective without poison, Crow currently has to land 17 daggers on a brawler to charge up his super. Now I'm thinking of decreasing this from eight daggers down to six daggers including their associated 24 ticks of poison. Without poison this would be about 12 daggers required to actually charge up Crow's super. Now including his super jump daggers he would actually be able to jump in and out of battle if he were able to land close to an enemy brawler and deal max damage with three quick shots. Which by the way is a very risky thing for Crow to do because he is so squishy of a brawler. Nonetheless in this type of situation I think the Crow would still be incredibly way too strong. In fact, this would need to be balanced correctly in order to make sure he does not become OP with another additional nerf. The first thing that I would do is actually look at the number of daggers that he throws out when he jumps up and lands with his super. Currently it's 14 daggers both times with the possibility of landing 6 daggers both times. My suggestion is to decrease that from 14 daggers down to 8 daggers both times with a possible 3 or maybe 4 landing a hit both times. With this, if Crow was right next to a brawler when he jumped up and landed and if he were able to throw out quick 3 attacks, then his total possible damage would be 5,880 damage assuming nobody he killed him and this is actually excluding poison. This is compared to his 8,232 damage that Crow could do in the same situation right now. To put this into perspective, this is almost a 30% nerf to the damage output in such a situation, along with a 25% buff to Crow's super recharge speed. Now there is no way for me to test whether this type of balance would actually make him incredibly OP or if he would still be underpowered, um, but at this point, as a developer, if I were able to do so, I would play around with Crow, see how he feels. If I think he's too strong at this point, then I would actually decrease the amount of damage that he outputs with his regular attacks um, and his poison until he felt right. Once again, my ideal Crow could jump in and out of battle frequently even if it meant that he did not have insane burst damage that he currently has. Okay, now let's quickly talk about brawlers that I don't think need balancing. First of all, Mortis. This is the brawler that most people suggest balancing that I disagree with. First of all, our, our, he is arguably the highest skill cap brawler in the game, especially for Brawl Ball. Also, he works great as an anti-thrower brawler in gem grab and in an aggro position, and additionally, he also works great as an assassin in certain bounty maps. I like there being high skill brawlers in the game as long as the skill is equally worth the reward. And Mortis has been incredibly weak for a very long time until recently where his lost last walking speed buff allowed him to actually become more viable. I still think that he is a solid option and that that skill required to play him right now is actually worth the actual benefits that you get from playing him. Next let's talk about Bo. A lot of people might suggest Bo actually getting buffed. He's incredibly underpowered for most maps in the game, but he's also incredibly overpowered on certain maps, like almost to the point where you like, yeah, I need I need Bo on this map or I will lose. He's also a high skill brawler and he counters other brawlers with lower skill caps if you play him correctly. For example, he outranges all of the gem carriers and his super has an incredibly high damage output which is tricky to deal with. Ideally I'd like to balance other brawlers for right now and decide later after looking at like the use rates and things like that before deciding to give him any buff if ever. Next is Brock. Brock is one of the best brawlers in the game. He's highest rated on the tier list right after Spike. Uh, with having four S tier rankings, one A tier ranking, and one B tier ranking. I'm actually not 100% sure if he doesn't need a nerf or if he does need a nerf. Part of the reason why Brock is so prevalent is because he's such a great counter to Spike and he replaces Colt in a lot of situations. If Spike gets nerfed and starts being used less and Colt gets buffed and starts being used more, Brock actually may become less of an obvious choice. So therefore I would like to actually see what happens to the current meta, um, look at his use rates and win rates later, which I mean, 
I can't even do that now, but if I could, that's what I would do, and then decide if I would actually buff him or not, or nerf him or not. Last brawlers that I wanted to talk about were El Primo, Shelly, Bull, and Daryl. Now, I've mentioned in this video how I like high skill brawlers being in the game, but I also think it is incredibly important that there are low skill brawlers in the game. Now, this is where El Primo and the Shotgunners come into play. They are not the best options at the competitive level. In fact, most of the time, they're a poor option at the competitive level. But early on in the game, they are super strong when players don't know how to manually aim well and they're still learning about positioning their brawlers correctly so that they know what kind of situations they can and cannot handle. Now, I do not have access to their win rates or their lose rates, but my guess is that they are actually perfectly balanced to be very strong in lower trophy ranges right now, or at least close to it. They are not great in the competitive scene, though they do have their merits on like certain maps and stuff that can be used. If they were buffed to be strong in the competitive scene, they would absolutely terrorize new players early on, and there would be almost zero reason for new players to actually learn how to play brawlers that weren't as strong as these other brawlers. So no, I don't think that they need a buff. I think that they're probably good right now. Once again, though, I don't know what their use rates or their win rates are. I would balance them according to lower parts of the trophy ranges, like below 4,000 trophies. Anyways, guys, I want to know what you think about these brawlers and which brawlers you think need balancing, and I really do love hearing your thoughts. I used to have time to be able to read through every comment on all of my videos until recently where I started getting hundreds and hundreds of comments on all of my videos, and it's actually like a really bittersweet moment for me. I'm really excited that you guys are loving my videos and that there's tons of people enjoying them, but I'm also sad that I'm not able to read every single one of them so but I do read them earlier on so like if you rep, uh, respond with a comment in the first hour of my video I can almost guarantee you I will read your comments so make sure you guys do that once again I wanted to give a huge thank you to my YouTube and Patreon sponsors for making my channel possible and for now this is Kairos time ticking by and we will see you in Brawl Stars